America where the percentage of Muslim living is small, so it will be a waste of time. If it's causing an impact and damage to the economy, do it. That is the fourth strategy. The fifth can be a political action. Political action means the Muslim countries themselves, they take a stance that now they on a political level, they tell the prime minister of that country that this has to stop. Otherwise, we will stop your embassy in our country. We will take back our ambassador, whatever it is. So, that is the fifth strategy that can be done on a political level. Directly, the prime minister talking among themselves, the president talking among themselves on a political level that they should stop, they should be apologized. Otherwise, political boycott will take place. And the last and the sixth is a demonstration or any act with force. For example, people may do something and may burn a figgy, may pelt stone at the embassy. Some people may take a bomb and blast, etc., which is happening, which as far as the first five are concerned, there's no problem. No one will object to. Even the people doing it, they can't object by. If it's freedom of speech, then we have a freedom to reply on the media. So no one, even if he's the enemy, if he writes against the prophet and if you reply in the media, he can't object it is wrong. Point number two, peaceful demonstration, no one can object. You wrote against, it is our freedom of speech. We are coming there and we are objecting to it. Peaceful way, handing a letter. No one, not even the worst enemy of Islam can object. No country can object to the second strategy. First, second. Third is boycotting the goods. It's my choice. I don't want to have your goods. I don't have American products. I don't have Danish products. It's my choice. No one can object. Fourth, legal action. I'm taking legal action. Whether the court punishes or gives them a compensation, that's your problem. But no one can object on a suit being filed. Fifth is political. The political party is putting a pressure, which no one again can object. Sixth, violence or force, people can object. As far as the sixth category is concerned of using force, part of it, on the lower level, I would not mind, depending upon the level of defamation, like burning a flag. May be useful, may not be useful, but no objection. As far as force is concerned, the sixth category, difference of opinion. But the last one, catching a foreigner of that country, a citizen of the country, taking him as a hostage or killing him, this Islam prohibits. Taking an American because he had done that, now I will kill him or I'll take a bomb and blast, this Islam prohibits. So as far as the first five categories which I spoke about, strategies, neither Islam will object, neither non-Muslim will object. The sixth category, little bit forced, burning a flag, burning a FAG, most people will not object and Islam also, you cannot say it's totally haram. But in the sixth category, higher level, using force and catching an innocent person and killing, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, that if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or creating mischief in the land, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. If you kill any human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for creating mischief, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. And if you save any human being, you have saved the whole of humanity. So if you catch the person who is involved in that act, then it may be possible. But catching an innocent citizen of some country, this is totally private in Islam. If you catch the person who's done that crime, and if it's an Islamic country, give him the punishment, what Islamic law? Way a Muslim can react. Now, as far as this issue that has come, which I told you, that 12 cartoons were made of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi on the 30th of September, in one of the newspapers, which was mainly restricted to Denmark. When it was done, they went to the Prime Minister, the people got together, the Muslim clerks got together, the Muslim ambassadors got together. After about three weeks, they went to the Prime Minister and they told him that what this is wrong, this is defamation, it's not right. The Prime Minister took it very lightly, he did not take any action. Actually, there was no response. Okay, okay, he said, but no response at all. On the 20th of January, after three months, the same thing was reprinted in Norway. Many Muslims told me from abroad, Zakir Bhai, is it right that we are taking so much demonstration, should we do or not, and etc., etc. So I said, see, if you don't nip at the bud, it will grow. Now, after checking up the news, we come to know this thing did not take place in January. It took place on the 30th of September. And the Muslims, in a peaceful way, they went to the Prime Minister. But he said, this is freedom of speech. Now what can I do? And he didn't give any response. Now, when this article was picked up by another European country, Norway, and reprinted the same thing on 20th of January, then four German newspapers again reprinted the same character of the Prophet defaming him. I cannot describe all. It will be wrong for me to repeat also. Certain things I can say that they showed him wearing a helmet like a time bomb and then having sword and etc. 
etc. Everything I can't say. So the thing is there that it was reprinted first in Norway. After that, the big human cry, and immediately in German, four newspaper in Germany did it. Then in France they did it. Then in Hungary they did it. In this meantime, immediately within a week's time, there was response from Muslim community almost throughout the world, mashallah. And the responses that took place, mashallah, in all six categories. First, there were reply. You find reply on the internet, you find reply in the magazines, you find reply on the satellite channel, mashallah. Very good response. Then on the second level, demonstration peacefully in many parts. Peacefully demonstrated in many parts. Pakistan, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Gulf countries, peaceful demonstration. The third one, taking legal action, Alhamdulillah, in Saudi Arabia, there are more than 500 lawyers who are thinking of appointing a committee internationally. In future, if anyone defames Islam or the Prophet, we will file international suit. This was the third strategy. Fourth strategy was having an economic embargo and mashallah, the economic pressure. Immediately, immediately, on statistics, the Middle East countries have banned the products of Denmark. Kuwait alone, every year, on an annual, 170 million dollars of import from Denmark. Denmark exports 170 million dollars every year to Kuwait alone. Middle East alone, it is more than 800 million dollars. Some statistics say one billion dollar a year. Now imagine more than 800 million dollars loss for Denmark every year. It's a big loss. The economy of Denmark is, it's a small country. It mainly deals in the dairy products of milk, etc. Only in the Middle East, not talking about the Muslim countries all put together. Muslim countries all put together will be billions of dollars. Only the Middle East countries and immediately in supermarkets, we found that the supermarket the people owned, they immediately said they put that dairy product from Denmark banned. Not that they went in loss. People bought some other product, but not of Denmark. But Denmark went in loss. So immediately what they did, that the dairy product committee in Denmark, they went to the prime minister. They went to the newspaper. That what's happening? So now there's apology from the newspaper, belated, after so many months. If you analyze the apology that came, mainly because of this economic embargo, in the Arabic and English was very clear. But in Denmark newspaper, it was slightly, you know, the translation was... So again, the Prime Minister also gave a half-hearted apology.